Hallelujah. And tonight, we will continue what we just started. I recall in this season of uh, resurrection, the church has introduced the teaching over the light. Pastor Rob came on a Saturday, he preached about the light, and uh, Sunday, Pastor Manny came and continue on the same teaching. We as a Christian, we need to shine. We need to shine our light. We need to raise up and shine our light. According to First John, first, we got to read from 4 to 9. I know Pastor Manny uh, uh, stop at 7. Can you put for me? First John. First four to seven. First first John chapter one and four to seven. First John, first, chapter 1, 4 to 7. I got 4 there. It says, and these things we wrote, we wrote to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Keep going. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleans us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and our sin and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Somebody say God is light. Somebody say Jesus is the light. Somebody say, I am, I am the light. Are you? Huh? Are you? Are you? Say like you mean it. Are you? Yes. Are you the light of the world? Yes. And raise and shine. You need to raise and shine as uh, Isaiah said. We need to raise up and shine our light. My question to you is Christian can shine at the church? You as a Christian, you as a light, can you shine your light at the church? My question, can you shine your light at the church? Yes? 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 How? How can you shine your, your light at the church? You are the light, right? And the word of God says for us to raise up and shine our light. My question to you, can you shine your light at the church? Can you? I don't believe so. Let me ask the, the different question. Can your light 
be noticed or be seen at the church? Yes. 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 Woo! Can you turn out the, all the lights for me? Can anybody turn the lights off? I need the, this really turn off. I need this place to be really dark. Blackout. Oh, I still have some here. Yeah. Off, off, off. Pick your cell phone. I want your cell phone now. Put your cell phone on. You see light, right? Keep your, your lights on, right? Turn me the light on now. Your cell phone still on. The light, big time, put. Is your light, is your cell phone. The brightness of your cell phone. Can still seen when there is a full light. I didn't say it doesn't have a light. My question: Can that light shine? Where is the brightness? No. You cannot notice. We cannot notice your light. At the church. Unless church, quote to quote church. But when I'm talking about church, the truly church, the body of Christ, where Christ himself is the light, your light cannot be seen. The light of Christ will supersede your light. But when you go to the darkness, your light will be shone. We as a Christian, when the word of God is asking us to raise and to shine our light, it's not shining our light at the church. You got to look for the environment where you need to shine your light. God is calling us to go in the darkness place. To go shine our light. Not to put our light under the table, as the word of God says. But you need to put your, your light on the table or your lamp. We are Christian. We have a portion or we have a Jesus inside of us. Jesus, who is the light of the world. Somebody say he was the, last, the light of the world. But last time I read in the Bible, is Jesus is the light of the world. Now, when we have Jesus inside of us, then we need to shine that light in the world. John 8, 12, Jesus said, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me will not walk in the darkness, but will have light of the life. If you follow Jesus, Jesus who is the light of this world, you will shine. You will carry on this light to the darkness. The light never run out the darkness. I can assume there is a darkness here. And there is a light also. When we turn this off, you will see black dark here. But when the light came, it didn't drive out the darkness. The darkness is still here, but it cannot be seen because of the brightness of the light. 
Light and darkness live together. You need to choose which one you are comfortable with. If you are comfortable with the darkness, then turn off your light. But if you are not comfortable with the darkness, then turn on the light. We as a Christian, we need to shine. We need to shine where is the darkness. Because the light will reveal all the hidden things. You might have a clothes that is really dirty or has some stain on. When you're in a dark place, you will not notice it. Unless when you're in a light, the light will reveal all the darkness. We as a Christian, that's our job. To reveal the darkness of this world. And to give solution to this world. Is that the mandate we have? That's the, the teaching we are teaching now. We need to turn on your, our light. Because we are living in the darkness. This world is a dark place. And we cannot live out of this world. This is our place. But we need to shine our light. Don't say because I live in the darkness, then I have to be comfortable with the darkness. You cannot be comfortable with this world and the world system. You have to shine your light, reveal the bad stuff in this world, and start to follow Jesus and walk as Jesus tells you to walk. Because he said, if we are in the light, and we said, we Walking in the darkness, that means we are making Jesus as a liar. There's no truth of Jesus in us. When you have a light, the light will reveal you who you are. And it will reveal you have some stain inside of you. That's why last time Pastor Mene asked a question. Is there any area in your life that you have some darkness? Do you apply the light in that area? The word of God says in Psalm, Psalm 119, 105, your word is the lamp on my feet. The word of God is the lamp that will show us what is wrong. In our life. Any darkness point in our life. The word of God will bring that to the light. You might have your wrong behavior. Or your wrong doing. But if you bring that in the presence of the word of God. And the word of God will tell you what you're doing is wrong. And it will bring you to do right. For you to do right. You cannot say oh oh ah. Uh, don't have this sin. That's the verse we just read. Uh, the first one, it says what? If we confess, if we say we don't have a sin, we are lying to ourselves, right? Before that, he was talking about the light. Jesus is the light. If we walk with him, we cannot walk in the darkness. And he associates that verse with the confession. The light will show you who you are. And when the light reveals who you are, don't reject that revelation. By you rejecting that, you are making Jesus as a liar. That's why I said, if we said, no, but if we walk in the light, as is the light, we have a fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all the sin. Eight. 
If we say we don't have a sin, we're deceiving ourselves. And there is no truth inside of us. The light will reveal that we have a sin. And the light will force you to confess that sin. By you confessing that sin, you will receive the cleanness. Why you will receive the cleanness? Because Jesus already cleansed you. This is what? The blood of Jesus cleans us for all our sin. As I said on Friday, that cleanness was happening all at once in our life. But we need to confess to get access to that cleanness. We cannot deny after the brightness reveal that there's so many people are living the life of denial. They don't, they cannot face the reality, the facts. They cannot face that. But the word of God is asking us to confess. Confession is aligning with the word of God. It's telling God, now God, according to your word, that is what I have done. God is all knowing, right? Yes. God knows our heart. You know that, right? Yes. And God knows our sin also. Yes. But God is asking you to confess your sin. Yes. I know many people, they pray like this. God, you know my heart. <laughs> you know my sin. God, you are not learning with his word. He knows, yes. But his problem is for you to confess it. By you confessing, you agree with his word. You got to tell God, God, yes, I did something wrong. I did this, I did that. And God said, yes, 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 you're right. And the power of cleanliness, and he will start to cleanse you. And he will strengthen you to do not repeat that again. The true confession will lead you to the strength of not repeating the same thing. When you will try to do it, the Holy Spirit will say to you, unless you just, you don't want to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I don't know any kind of Christian that when he's sin and he doesn't know he's sinning. You know, yes, you are sinning. But you will say, ah, you know, I'll let just sin. Then I will go and uh, ask the forgiveness later on. You do that, yes. God will forgive you, yes. But they will have some consequence. All sin has a consequence. All sin. There's no sin that doesn't have any consequence. All sin. How many people, they're cheating to their spouse, they go to God, they ask for forgiveness, assuming that their spouses, they don't know, but later on, they end up to their marriage. Because the Holy Spirit will do anything to reveal that. How many people, they call themselves, oh, I'm a true Christian, I walk in the light. But under the need, they're doing bad thing. I remember where I grew up when any man of God do any wrong thing like a, a, a impregnate anybody. They don't only discipline them but they excommunate them. Assuming they say, uh oh, you've been doing that all your life. But God just exposed you in the pregnancy. Because if you did not impregnate that person, we will not know. 
Because you've been doing that. Because God revealed you that you come not to us, say, oh, forgive me, I will not do it. No, 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 you've been doing that. That's the consequence. Is the light just bring that walk of darkness in the brightness for everybody to see it? They will say, oh, oh you, don't know, you don't deserve this. We don't kick you out of the church. You're still there, but they don't let you come here. Because this place is the place that we plant a seed. For you to come here, you cannot have a double life. When you are here, you have to have your light in you all the time. Your light has to be shown. You have to shine your light all the time. You cannot be like, oh, you're on the light here. Yeah? Then when you go home, you start to live the life of darkness. God will expose you. You can hide one year, two years, four years. But the six year or five, the six year, God will reveal you. God will. Our God, He doesn't play a game. He's a God of light. Because He's a light, He will reveal the darkness. That's why we need to have that light inside of us. We need to shine that light. For our light to be seen. With all the full brightness, you have to be in the darkness place. We as a Christian, we need to shine. Shining is not only preaching people, but we need our work to be seen. Wherever you are, your light has to be seen. You are not only Christian here, everywhere. Even you are not introducing yourself as a Christian, but people will notice. They will say, are you one of those Christians? Because of the brightness of your light. You don't need to introduce yourself. Oh, I'm a minister. I am a pastor. Or I am a, a deacon. Or I'm a choir member. No, 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 no. no. Let your light speak itself. The word of God says they will know you by your fruit. The fruit is the product of the brightness of the light. The way you speak, the way you act, people say, uh uh-uh. uh. This guy. I, I recall many years ago I was uh, uh, working uh, in some company. Then uh, I was representing people as a, a un- union rep in my uh, company. Then the owner, that billionaire, he loved to swear. Every word he say, you have to curse out. And people got used. And one incident, I was with uh, the, the, in the HR office, we were dealing with some problem. Then the, the guy came, started to scream, who are you? Where are you from? Da, 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 da. And started to curse. I said, hey, calm down. I never curse and I don't want to listen to your curse. You cannot curse me out. Say, who are you? I say, I am who I am. Then I go like this. <laughs> is the guy is a Christian? Yes, I am. He said, oh, I'm sorry, but welcome in America. I said, I don't care America, I don't care anything. I have to be who I am. I never curse out to you, you don't curse out on me. Anytime if he's yelling, screaming, he says, hey, nice, I'm sorry. <laughs> but he was the boss. But I shine my light. Even I was in a dark place. I didn't, I didn't want to be comfortable with the darkness place. I have to speak up. Your light needs to be seen in the world. Because here, who cares out here? Nobody. But outside, oh my God. 
There's some people, they know how to cast out. When they start, oh. But you have to stand up against those people. You don't catch them out. But you got to tell them you don't want to listen to that. You don't want to hear that thing. That's your, the way you will shine your light. Speak up. Don't come speak up here. Because here you don't see all this thing. Here everything is holy. You know, holy because we are in a holy place. But of there, that's the place you need to shine your light. That's the place you need to make a difference. Shining light is not only have a good behavior, but it's also the success. In the darkened world, in this world, God wants us as the children of the most high God to have a success also. They will say, uh oh, this. Mm. If you read Isaiah, I think Isaiah 6, let me go ahead, let me check it by myself before I say anything here. Go ahead, Isaiah 61 first. Spirit, no, 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 not this. Let me go. Oh, God. I'm looking. Wait, check. Give me a second. I wanna. I don't wanna see something. Something say raise and rise your light. I'm in sixty. Six zero. Yes. Sixty. No sixty one. It goes like this. Arise, shine your light as come. And the glory of the Lord rises up in you. See darkness cover the earth and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises up in you and his glory appear over you. Nation will come to your light and the kings of the brightness of the dawn. Isaiah 60, put there. For the light has come, who is the Lord Jesus? And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For below the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and king to the brightness of your, your rising. It goes like this. Arise because the light has come. Even in this darkness place, in the darkness world, you will shine. And the glory of your God will manifest and will be seen. The nation will come and see your glory. The nation will come and see your, your light. 
I heard the preacher, I think it's Cliff Dollar, he was saying about the glory. Most of the time, we as a Christian, we see glory only in one area. The glory, the presence of God, the present shaking of God. We see the glory something like spiritual. But here they say, when you shine, when you shine your light, the glory of God it will be upon you and it will be seen. And this glory, any glory that is being seen is something material. Something people can see. Because the spiritual, I mean the carnal people cannot see spiritual things. According to 1 Corinthians 2. Only spiritual people will see spiritual things. Carnal people will not see spiritual things. Now, if this glory was a spiritual things, how could the Gentile will see that? For them to see that, that could be something material. And the word of God says, Solomon, Jesus was said, Solomon was the richest king in his age. He was really, really rich. And I think it's in Luke 6, something like this. Jesus said, even Solomon with his glory could not wear as the flower, right? Everybody knows that Solomon was rich. But Jesus referred his wealth as a glory. When they say, arise and shine, and the glory will be seen, that, I assume, I come in the conclusion, is something material. We as a Christian, we need to show our glory in the world. The world now can see that they're the only one they are blessed. We are the blessed. Because Jesus, who was rich, he has become poor for, for his poverty. We become Second Corinthians 8 9. Right? Can you put that there? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. That is the exchange. One of the exchange Jesus did on the cross for you and I. When we receive that glory, that light, when it's shining in us, it needs to be seen. That's why we serve the most high God. We need to be blessed. And our blessings cannot be only limited spiritual blessing. It has to be material also. So that the Gentile, the carnal people can see that. That's why we need to shine our light. Shining our light is going back in the school. Shining our light is going having more education. Shining our light is doing business to be successful. We cannot just limit that. Oh, I'm shining my light. Uh, no more sin. No, 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 no. Everywhere. Shine your light. Shine your light. Shine your light. In the dark place. In the darkness, you need to shine your light. We need to see difference. The word of God says, I think in the Exodus, you will see the difference between those who serve God and those who are not serving God. We need to see the difference. 
Even in Exodus 14, when God was uh, 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 punishing the Egyptian, the word of God says, God let the darkness, I think it was in the Gozen, God let the darkness in Egyptian place and the brightness in his people sight. We need to see differences. That's why your light is so very important. You need to shine your light. For your light to be seen with all the full brightness, you have to be in the darkness place. That's why I started by asking you, can you be fully shine in the church? The answer, no. Even you really shine, but it, will, it won't be seen. It's like, yeah, yeah, thank God. It's like, you see, this world all the time is dark, okay? The only time we see the brightness on the rise of the sun, right? Sun, moon, and all the small star always is bright. But the world is dark. But when the sun rises, you cannot see the star. No way. But the star is still there. But the brightness of sun overshadows the brightness of the star. If we assume Jesus is here, the church is the body of Christ. The brightness of Jesus will overshadow our brightness. It cannot be seen. But when the sun goes, I mean a sunset, right? And he go, he faces another part of the world. Then we see darkness. Then we see you know, Mrs. Moon, their show. The star, the, the uh, brightness, and we see the star shining. But when the sun is there, they cannot be seen. I, did, I, I give you this illustration just to show you how our brightness can be seen. I mean, in the world, in the dark place. Amen.